Hi everyone, it's Jack back with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about Dlocal, a recent IPO cross-border payments company based in Uruguay. It was a bit it was a big growth story this year, roughly doubled since IPO in about a month. Now came back to IPO price roughly. It was a big stock on FinTwit, a lot of people, a lot of buzz about this company. Um, so Dlocal, more specifically, is a truly international payments business. It's majority of its business is in Latin America, but also present in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, growing at good rates. Uh, particularly they want to help big businesses reach customers in emerging markets more easily. Um, basically these markets have lots of local payment methods, increasingly fragmented market with different currencies, poor conversion methods and high rates of fraud so they managed to combat this with their strong API and the currency management and regulation and law in these countries, the different, different countries in different regions is no small task organising these frameworks and things like that into one API but this is what the local managers to do. So they have a comprehensive and differentiated suite of solutions in both a back-end and front-end. Again, all in one API that links to local payments advisors. It's a really high-value proposition to big companies, a lot of services for your money, and this type of all-in-one solution is really, really high-value proposition, in my opinion, to a large company. So this is just to illustrate the complexity in emerging markets compared to the US. So in the US, 32% is digital or mobile wallets, about 30% for credit card, 20% for debit card, and then a very small percentage in other. Each of these geographies is different and in different in different ways. Digital mobile wallet is 60% of Asia Pacific, whereas in Af in Middle East and Latin America, it's less than 20. Credit card is 20% in Asian Pacific, and in Latin America and the Middle East, this is the most po this is the most popular one by far. Bank transfers and debit cards are not really that often used in Asia Pacific, and whereas in Middle East and Africa and Latin America, these are sig a significant percentage. So you can see there's a, there's a lot of payment methods, particularly in Asia Pacific, a lot of payment methods, a lot of some small payment methods like direct debit and buy now pay later increasingly fragmented market especially when compared to a completely developed economy like north north america and the u.s stats illustrate 11 percent e-commerce compound annual growth rate that's just in the u.s you can expect this to be higher for emerging markets and you would expect that the the top one the top payment methods will only get larger or over time if dlocal can capitalize capitalize on with large customers to improve the method of transacting in these large payment methods i think this could be really a defensible moat and will increase the switching cost dramatically you got to remember also that these markets contained a significant portion of unbanked population particularly in africa and some areas of latin america the locals should grow with these countries as the bank population increase and as e-commerce exposure increase which is a really good value proposition for this business so as mentioned the time is exceptionally high here. total payments volume volume for the local is accelerating rapidly but it's only really scratching the service up to about 240 percent from 2020 to just the last the last 12 months to 5 billion again only really scratching the service this surely tremendous time and this time is growing at really respectable rates 27 percent compound annual growth rate for the latin america asian Af africa e-commerce regions and that's total e-commerce volume in the countries that they serve excluding china so that really is a tremendous amount in these these again e-commerce is only in the, the early stages in a lot of these markets so really impressive 20 percent compound annual growth rate over the next few years so you can expect this to be a two trillion dollar um total addressable market before long d local is growing at exceptional rates and it's being outpaced by the dramatically by the total addressable market rate which is great what i like to see they can eat up eat up value without even really getting into the market share so if they can increase the market share even slightly the growth rate could be exceptional so I've, as we've established the runway for growth is truly tremendous and you can see that they're really capitalizing on this at the minute total pay, payment volume up 217 percent year over year from quarter 3 2020 to quarter 3 2021 revenue up 123 percent to now 69 million just for the quarter and adjusted EBITDA up 110 percent year over year these year over year numbers are actually insane uh, valuation will start to shrink very quickly if the business continues to grow at this rate. And the total payment volume growth in particular is really impressive. And you can see they're really capitalizing on that in, in, in incredible time. And in, really impressive for such a young company, two, bil two billion and a quarter of total payment volume. This is not an old company, less than 10 years old. Really impressive. So just a summary of the most recent quarter's financial highlights compared with the, the last quarter and the, from 2020. Net retention is the highlight here, absolutely insane. Net increase of 85% per customer in the most recent quarter. This really shows the value proposition and the high switching costs and that customers are loving it. I'm not a user of DLocal, but what what attracts me to businesses like these when I don't know a lot about the actual the work into the software and how good it is, is these type of retention numbers. Absolutely stupid retention numbers, some of the highest I've ever seen. 
exceptional year over year growth numbers in every category, significant quarter over quarter acceleration of these numbers. And I'm just really impressed with these numbers and can see why it commands the valuation we'll see overleaf. And nearly 70% of 2020 revenue in one quarter we've seen in this third quarter. So you can see this acceleration is exceptional. Attractive margins, typically around 40% per quarter. I'm not blowing the doors off, but really strong for this type of company, in my opinion, in the fintech space. Right now, it's pretty much IPO prices, significantly off its 52-week high of $73. So that's roughly a 50% decline. Uh, valuation is is high. There's no getting around that. It was already high. It's now its price sales are now fifty. Obviously, got really stretched in the middle of the year as people discovered about this company. And when its third quarter results came out, it really blew the doors off. Recent pullback in the wider mar- growth market and stocks that had you know 180, 100 price sales got really stung. So this is going to sting for people who bought at seventy dollars. But for everyone else, I think this is definitely worth adding to a watch list. Even at a price sales of nearly fifty. If the stock stays the same, this uh, the girl for it's this company is doing, this is going to contract rapidly. And perhaps the company is deserving of a price of sales above 30, 40, because it's very rare to see a company growing it. Revenue 100%, payment volume at 200%, margins at 100%, and a net revenue retention rate of 185%. These are absolutely ridiculous numbers, and it definitely deserves a high valuation. I'm not sure if 50 is quite right. But if this com- again, like I said, if this stock stays the same and the there's going to be extreme multiple contraction. I think this will be definitely a worthy purchase for me. But again, this is not financial advice or this is not personalized financial advice. So if you're looking for personalized financial advice, you should contact a registered financial advisor. This is just my opinion. And with that, thank you. If you could please like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content.